Howdy. How y'all doing out there? I'm taking the place of Darby. Because he kept getting knocked off. So, we'll see how that goes tonight. Alright? Yeah. Did you fool them? I think so. All right. <sighs> Down to business. Hey, guys. Looks like a good signal from my end. I don't seem to be too fuzzy. I'm looking on there. Look at me. Hey. But they haven't told me I'm on yet. So I must not be live. So I'm on. Dead. Hmm. Anyway, I see people. So somebody's awake. Hey, we got some real good news. I've got one group from Houston, one group from out of state, one group from maybe, maybe Mason, and a couple other people from out of state in Missouri. And some people don't even know where they are yet. They don't even know where their land is going to be yet, but they know they want to put houses on it and they want to put a pure salvage outpost on it. Now, does anybody listening know what that means? Let me see. Sarah, hmm, you've been here. Mm -hmm. And Nikki, you've been here. You know what I'm talking about. And Nikki's one of those people that's got a big hill to climb to make this happen. What do I mean by a hill to climb? Hmm. That means you got everything to do still. Not that you don't have a dream. Not that you don't have a path. Not that you don't have a chance of getting there. Just challenging, challenging. Yeah, I'm one who knows about challenges. Yeah, because I'm not real. That's challenging. Yeah. Uh oh, live video interrupted. The broadcast. Uh, it didn't tell me over here that the broadcast was interrupted. So they're messing with me over there, and I'm not doing nothing wrong. My disguise didn't work. Maybe. Hmm. We'll see. People have been complaining and they got to sit there and listen to those breaks and they got to listen to Darby Jabber and they don't know what they're supposed to do to be able to get this stuff for free. Guess what? It's because it's not easy as it seems. You have to be able to write down how you think. That means to articulate your thoughts, to organize them more than one day in a row. So you just can't be a... Um, you know, what they call that these days. They got all these names for different kinds of people. Um, oh, I think one of the things they call people is uh, bipolar, which means you're manic, which means you seem to be really bizarrely active all the time, or you're depressed, suicidal. That's called, they, these are all these tags. You see, Freud, who is a really sick guy, who is therefore able to then, what, understand sick people and come up with all these different labels to put on people so they could then put him into insane asylums instead of prisons very convenient thing when you can't get somebody to do something illegal you just say hey you're crazy and we're gonna put you in prison the only problem is is since that time they came up with a lot more labels can you believe they got labels like overly creative personality you think they're trying to get into the world of cyber talking heads or something and start tagging them too because Jeez, I might get tagged under those conditions. What was he? He was dangerously overly creative. He kept creating all these solutions. We had to put him away. Why? What kind of solutions was he making? Productive ones. They were actually changing the way people were acting. And, and, would you believe they were changing them in, of all things, positive ways? You talk about communi commun commun communicating. How could he do that? We're trying to stop communication, they said. And change the words and make it all confusing. And he was contradicting our narrative. We institutionalized him. So that's what happened to Mikhail. Mikhail. That was his first name. It implies he's obviously not American. No, he wasn't. Bakhtin. Bakhtin. B-A... Yeah. B-A-K-H... 
T-I-N. Mikhail Bakhtin. Interesting guy. Yeah. Yeah. He spent some time in jail. No, see me. Well, both. Yeah. Not a very lucky guy during his life. He happened to get involved with these writers, and they were writing about freedom of speech and writing about how they were changing the words to mean different things during when communism was being spread through Russia. <sighs> yeah, communism. Actually, Lenin and those guys, those writers, I love writers, don't you? They make up all this trash sometimes that they call fiction or literature, depending on the writer. Yeah. I'm not sure where it goes into getting you in jail and put into insane asylums. But at some point, writing becomes dangerous. Um, King James had a big deal. You know, he really liked taking care of writers that were dangerous. Yeah, King James. Yeah, remember him? He's the guy that wrote the Bible as we know it. Most people know the Bible. It's the King James version of the Bible. And that's because all the writers whom he didn't particularly like the way they were writing, he just changed their writing style. He cut off their hands. Or he cut off their heads and just totally changed the way they looked at the world, their perspective. Your perspective when your head is in a bucket is much different than it is when it's on top of your shoulders. So as we start censoring people and beheading them on the internet, effectively, chopping off their mouth on the internet, which is this effectively is, I guess, some polite technological modern terms that people could understand would be um, cyber castration. No, that's, that's, that's one. That's not really totally taking you offline. Deplatforming would be more like the cyber guillotine where you chop off somebody's head and then they cannot talk anymore. Luckily, being a digital creature, I can survive that. And I'm back in business again. Ordinary human beings, if you were to deplatform them, to effectively guillotine their sources of income, their identity, they would not be able to utter a word anymore. Imagine, as a human being, how painful that could be. And that's what's going on. That is effectively what censoring has become. Because if you have a digital identity that you spent years developing and you have millions and millions of followers, like some of these lucky people do, because they didn't get trashed and shadow banned early, like I did. So I have some experience talking about this. Actually, I don't. Brad did. He just told me to take a flying hike and left me behind. The digital image you were looking at, the talking head. And so my job is for Brad's purposes to go ahead and get rid of all that stuff because he's not coming back and going to business again, he said. And I believe him. So Trinity and I, Darby and Nate, all of whom you can find in that fantasy world of Salvage Texas, where Tiny Texas Houses was born. And why is that important? Because there's Tiny Texas House, what would you say? Remnants. Yeah. There's houses here that you can come and stay in. So you can feel a 67 square foot house, what it feels like. So you know if you want to build a 67 square foot house or an 80 square foot house called the Ginger Swan. So you know if you want to stay in an 80 square foot house called whatever you want to call it. And it's got a balcony on the second floor. In fact, there was a really good write up by a couple that came in. A young lady brought her boyfriend in, didn't tell him about it. And after they got past the junkie part on the front where we disguise it so that people don't know what's in the back. He was quite surprised. And they enjoyed themselves so much they stayed an extra day because they stayed in the ginger swan. Now, I, I notice I'm getting flashed. Oh, they must be up. They're cutting some stuff out. It says the video has been paused over at your end. I didn't pause it, guys. So, evidently, Facebook is helping me out by downgrading the, um, what I can tell, the quality of the video, interrupting it, possibly modifying it for me in case I didn't edit myself properly. And who knows what you'll get to hear. But, yes, Nikki, I have everything but land. The only thing holding you, land is not exactly a small affair. 
So again, you need to be careful about several things. One is don't buy land where they won't let you put tiny houses. That's very important. And you need to check the deed restrictions. You need to check the county's building codes because I've had people, neighbors, those nice people that live next door to you that maybe not like what you're doing and they call and they make life pure hell. I've even known people get arrested because they said, bullshit, I'll do whatever I want. And then the sheriffs came out and said, no, you won't. And the fire marshal came out and said, no, you won't. And then the inspectors came out and said, no, you won't. One guy in Austin, he decided to dig tunnels like I did and dig under his house. And he did a lot of digging. And when they found out, they came and arrested him and threw him in jail and collapsed his house into the hole and filled it. Yeah. Austin's not real happy about you digging under your house. So you want to make sure when you go to buy land that you don't have entities like the entities in Austin that are just come and take you and throw you in jail and trash your house because you did something with your land they did not pre-approve. Yeah. So get in the country, first of all, because there's less people that can watch over you that way. Now, in some states, like you go way up north, northeast. Hmm. Well, they've been making laws for over 200 years. Do you know it can stink with laws? Too many laws. You can't even smell them. But when you start to do something, they keep telling you whatever you're trying to do stinks. And they won't let you do it because... It just stinks. So they won't let you use lofts like I do to make bedrooms up there because that's living space. And they say, no, it's not. It's for storing things. And they say, yeah, but you might live in it. I say, yeah, true. I probably would. And they say, therefore, you can't have it up north. Now, even down south some places. Now, if you go to Alabama or Mississippi or Louisiana, I think from the people I've talked to, you pretty much have to buy a permit to build a doghouse. Now, what's that mean, buy a permit? Well, if your name is Thibodeau and you live in southern Louisiana and you're linked five generations deep to all the local inspectors and everybody, if you're one of those people that gets a traffic ticket and you go in there and they just take it from you and say, thank you very much, you don't have to pay, you're from here. You got no problem. On the other hand, if you're from someplace else, and you're not five generations connected to the locals and your uncle's not the judge and your other uncle's not the sheriff and your aunt isn't running the, the city clerk's office, well, you might have a harder time. See, I graduated in Alabama down there in Dothan. That was my last school. And uh, um, I'm familiar with the fact that if you know the right people, you're just in like Flint, as the saying goes. That's the Flint on the back of a musket, so when you pull the hammer back, it bang, shoots. That's in like Flint. Didn't know that, did you? And if you're not in like Flint, you can shoot all day long, but your bang ain't gonna have no ball flying out the end of the barrel if you ain't got your Flint. Is that right? Yeah. So, onward. The people so far that I've been talking to, some of them do have land already. They've got ag exemptions in Oklahoma. If you've got an ag exemption on your land and you have more than a certain amount of acres, and that's really important, again, Nikki, in other places, in for Texas, for example, if you have 30 acres in Texas, you can be a ranch. If you have under 10 acres, you can't even get homestead exemption. You can't really do hardly anything with less than 10 acres. So it's really important to know these things when you go out to buy. Now, for veterans, go out to buy yourself a 10-acre track of land with nothing on it, or maybe an old well, as some people out there in Mason have gotten, oh, well, an old septic. You want that. If you can get it. Even if it's not a functioning well, but it's a almost functioning well. It's been functioning. That's a good thing. If it's just a pump, that's a good thing. If it's a well casing, that's a harder thing. That's not so good. But sometimes you can still manage to run a good, thick, stiff line down there, polybutylate, and be able to create yourself a still a pump mechanism if you can get the pump down the hole. The trick is to get the pump down there. Yeah, because pump has to pump from the bottom up. That means a long piece of wire going down to the pump, down the hole, to pump it out. It's too far down to siphon out of it, typically, um, for deep wells. Now, for shallow well, that's a different situation. So this is very important. You must have water. You can't just depend on rainwater. 
Electric, you can get by, maybe not have electric, but typically electric's not as hard to get as water. Now, if you got somebody that's going to come out there and pick on you about how you're going to get rid of your poop and your pee, that would be the county, typically, or the state that has laws. So you have to pass what's called a perk test. In other words, don't think if you're going to buy a bunch of land, if it's clay and you can't make water evaporate through the soil, that means pass a perk test. You have to be able to and you have to hire a darn engineer to come out there and punch a hole in the ground three foot deep and fill it with water and stare at it. And he goes, huh, water's not going nowhere. Duh, you got a problem. So there's various people. Oh, hey, I ain't giving some information on, on Louisiana. As far as I know, in my part of Louisiana, as long as you don't want electricity, you really don't have to have a permit. Hey, now see, loophole. Loophole. Learn your loopholes. Loopholeology is the study of what loophole allows you to do what you want to do. So in a lot of cases, let's just say you have electric up at the front and you have a sewer or septic up at the front and you want to add tiny houses. She just told you the loophole. Don't run any electricity to the house. Same as mine. If I have walking water, I don't have to have a septic. I can have a porta potty which means a five-gallon bucket, and I keep clay in another bucket. And when I fill it and I put something in there I don't want to smell, I put bentonite clay on top of it. Dirt, in other words, but in this case, clay. And Or you can use um, wood shavings, although I used wood shavings for a while because I had a lot of pine shavings. And then sure as sit, sure as sit, when she sat on my pine shavings, she was allergic to pine sap. It caused her butt cheeks to break out because there were some wood chips on the butt from the butt seat, I guess, because she wasn't very neat about putting wood chips in. And so I would say that's a suggestion, a precaution. Typically, you don't want to go pee in your porta potty in the house. If you can, you want to pee in your your canopy bed, the same can you use to pee in when you're in bed. You can use that key. Yeah. No, you don't do that? Uh, well, when you have a loft and you're in a hurry and you're over 55, I know, kids, this sounds really crazy, but you might have to go pee more than once and you might have to go pee in a hurry. And it is very difficult to get down a ladder with your legs crossed, in case you haven't tried it yet. And as you get older, you might just not be able to say, um, keep from hmm, dribbling on your way down there in a hurry. I hear, I only hear that. So you have a canopy bed. That means the canopy is right next to your bed. So you lean over sideways as a male and stick it in there and let it go. I know women don't seem to like that method as much. They have to actually crouch over a very large mouth bottle can and they can still do it. They have a canopy bed, I mean, right? Yeah, oh well. Anyway, I know. Who needed to know that? Well, if you have a tiny house with a loft, you needed to know that. And if you got one of those coffin lofts, that means the one that's about three foot tall that you can't sit up in, well, ladies, you got a problem because you're probably not going to be able to use your canopy bed efficiently. And an inefficient canopy is a bad thing in bed. I know, I've fallen asleep before after using, oh, no, excuse me, in the midst of using my canopy bed, laying on my side, and then woke up when I shifted, and the canopy shifted with me, except it shifted on its side. Ruined my entire night. Who'd think a canopy bed could ruin your night? You'd think it'd be, it sounds romantic, doesn't it? Until you know what it is. Anyway, all right, yeah, thunder jug, there you go, that's right, the big mouth one. And actually, oh, wait. For those of you who are not familiar with the old days, I happen to have the old days way we did that. In fact, I have two, not just one, but two portable urinals. Now, this is the really expensive kind. This is actually porcelain covered. Whoa, I'm telling you what. Hmm. That's for big guys. Now, actually, truth is, if you're female, you can actually put this up there and be able, I mean, put this next to you, next to you, and hit that target. And as a guy, most of you going to be okay. And if you're not, <laughs> wow. Now, admittedly, you might wake up in the middle of the night 
And as a male, it may be a little larger than normal because you have to go, causes that to happen. And if that happens, guess what? That should still be enough. But if it's not, you are one blessed dude. I'm telling you what. Now, for those of you who, on the other hand, don't want to take a chance on spilling afterwards, they make the modern... Remember in the 1950s, it said plastics, son. Everything is plastics. And so they made this one, and this one even says on the side of it, Little John. But I'll tell you what the problem with Little John is. Little John looks really good. Except Little John has a little crack in the bottom. And if Little John were to be used, the little crack in the bottom would make a very wet bed. I do not recommend Little John. But this one, on the other hand, if you have a, an extremely large bladder and you happen to fill it up past a certain point and tilt it wrong, <clears throat> Another problem with the canopy bed again. So, so much for your lesson on bathrooms in tiny houses. <sighs> Everything you needed to know in one night. By the way, as part of this million dollar, two million dollar, and three million dollar giveaways, if it lasts that long and enough people get involved and this all goes well, I will not be supplying any of these portable Johns to anybody. Just so you know. Don't want to get those expectations up too high. I only have one of those plastic ones. And why would I never buy another one? I don't know. Luckily, I didn't find out it didn't work by using it. If anybody's going to ask that question. I know, it's an irresistible question to ask. Okay. Oh, there is another portable John. Wait a second. This is my favorite. I do happen to use this one and recommend it. It actually has a very convenient handle on it. It has a little lid on it and I recommend it and it's not clean. I'd show you the inside because it's actually a used one. And there is a nice little hole in the bottom. Look at that. And so this is a portable John. I highly recommend them if you can find them and if you find any extras, send them to me. I want more. They're so cool. So that is my... Um, Tiny house bathroom class. To go along with the other questions anybody else had them, since the update was, everybody, hey, we tested it. We didn't get canceled out tonight. This is so cool. And, oh my goodness, we're only out of phase a little bit because I can see myself up there going to get that John right now. <sighs> can you believe I did that? Okay. Hey, everybody. Hey, she ah, Shelly, nice to see you again. Yes. Oh my goodness. Look at all these people finally coming in here. When my grandma got into her plumbing, she turned in all her bedpans into garden planters. That's not a good idea. What happens when the plumbing goes down? See, like it just did in Texas. Do you realize how many people would have appreciated my canopy bed idea and my porta potties in the last week in Texas? Hey, I'm telling you what. I did find out some more stuff, though, real quick. On the electric thing. If you were buying wholesale electric, there's companies in Texas you can actually have a choice on. I'm in a town called Luling that has a monopoly, and we have got no choice. So whatever they charge me, I just got to live with it. But on the other ones in Texas, what happened was they had a super-duper low rate because they were buying wholesale. But when the wholesale price skyrocketed, they called them up and gave them, like, zero notice. Get off now get another supplier now and of course everybody else went no we don't move that fast and so by the time the people found uh, a way to get out from under it one guy's quadriplegic they had knocked the poor guy down for about thirteen thousand dollars yeah so don't think it can only happen in texas the grid went down in effect because of bad people bad administration, bad policies, a lot of which got exposed. Sometimes you got to get kicked where it hurts before you understand that you're vulnerable. Guess what? Texas got kicked where it hurts. Millions and millions of dollars in food went into the dumpsters. 
millions of dollars of people's hard-earned life savings went into the pockets of people who really shouldn't be getting it. Yeah. The country has gone crazy. Now, it turns out, good old Uncle Heinz and Kraft. Oh, I mean, yeah. John Kerry. Yeah, the guy that's married to Mrs. Heinz of Heinz Foods, who certainly has, as a billionaire, no particular interest in what you and I think about him or his negotiating with Iran prior to elections to possibly get help from them on maybe using some of their, hmm, you know how that works, possibly. Well, those things, things, why don't we just do something about this in the world where you don't have the leaders working behind the people back doing terrible things just because they're billionaires. Of course, I know we just had a billionaire for president, but that billionaire didn't go out and kill people and start wars. That billionaire didn't pretend to be a anti-Vietnam War guy, I guess, because later on he went out there and just got us into all sorts of bad things in Libya and other places. And he's at it again with this new administration that's in my book that I'm writing about. Mm -hmm. So pay attention, kids, as we give Iran all sorts of stuff and money and breaks so we can make more hmm, nuclear weapons. I don't want yet. Don't you want to see more nuclear weapons in the world? Hmm, it's disturbing. So why would we want to go ahead and establish these little tiny towns outside of the cities where you could go ahead and raise your children in peace and possibly secure and teach them some other things other than what they might be getting taught in school now that you can have boys and girls all go into the same bathrooms together and pretend that they're not whatever they are supposed to be by whatever they were born as. And, and frankly, I understand. I fully understand. There are six different gene sets now. Because you can have four genes. You can have X's and Y's, up to four of them. That means XXYYY or XYYY or XXXXX. It makes for a lot of combinations, explaining, therefore, why some girls have mustaches. And some guys, they just really don't care from the beginning because they are not wired to care. Because now we have an additional complexity we found out through science. Because when I was young, people could not be born gay. It was scientifically impossible. Well, since then, science has figured out, no, it actually is not only possible, we've proven how it happens. It is possible for a male to be wired with a female brain in utero because guess what? The mother isn't producing testosterone and estrogen properly because they're eating all sorts of garbage that is in our food that causes a real problem. And inhaling as you might go to Walmart and buy window blinds and it gives off because it's vinyl an endocrine disruptive compound that mimics estrogen so if you're a pregnant woman and you just bought a bunch of brand new vinyl blinds all through your house and put in brand new vinyl windows or moved into a brand new house that has all this vinyl you'll be breathing in an endocrine disruptive compound that mimics estrogen and then that will cause you to have imbalances that may cause you not to be able to produce the testosterone for a baby boy and instead when you are given a baby boy based on chromosomes you'll wire that baby boy as a baby girl in the brain. So when she comes out, he comes out, he, she comes out because she got both of them now. You got a male body and a female brain. And when they come out, you're going to have a mixed up person because society doesn't really let that happen right now. So this big controversy that we're having in our society, which represents actually what would happen on any planet. And when they come over here and you might have to have four of the another species to have a child. Are we now going to go and hang them because it takes four of them to have a child? We can't do that. So Wibbley and Wub is all about how do you deal with the findings that, oh, there are different human beings than just the standard model. How do you deal with these different human beings? Now, the Native Americans, they had it. It was okay. You could be different. It was all right to be different. Thank goodness. Some of us are a little different. But on top of that, now, genetically, we know you can be a lot different. And as we start getting into genetic modifications, such as hmm, fertilization drugs. Why do I say genetic modifications? Because if you're doing fertilization drugs to have a child, there's a good chance you're going to have a child who's going to be seven foot tall. It's a common byproduct of the chemicals, the the drugs, the, the hormones that women take to 
extend their time that they can have children into their 40s or later, these sometimes cause extreme height as a byproduct, which causes some back problems and issues for the, for the child. But um, these are all things we're learning now. So not only can you wire a child to be boy, girl, based on the mother's physical condition due to her diet, you can now affect, we know, their jaw, how their mouth develops, how everything in the body develops based on what the mother does while the child is in her womb. Like smoking cigarettes the whole time causes a reduction in oxygen and causes some dull-witted children to come out with a lot of physiological problems as well as psychological. Same with alcohol. Same with all this stuff. If you're going to produce a miracle in your belly, you need to treat it with respect. And if you do, Please, if there's any reason in the world you don't want that child and you've done that and you've treated it with respect and you've given it a beautiful home until it's born and there's any reason in the world that you don't think you can take care of it, hey, I'm here to volunteer for a few. Don't abort. Salvage, Texas. Beautiful, bright babies carried by a wonderful loving mother that just can't have them for some reason can't raise them because of conditions social or family we'll help you out I'll make that commitment today too along with giving away millions of dollars and especially if you're one of those groups that's got foster kids that you're trying to raise and you're trying to build something for them I'm on board I'm all for supplying the house materials it takes to get these kids a house as they come out of the system. They've got programs that'll help them get tools. They've got programs that'll help them. So if you open up a pure salvage outpost, it may be one that they can come to and learn how to build them a tiny house. This is important to me. I can't do this myself. I can't do this everywhere it's needed. I need your help, all of you. And to get that, I'm willing to give you the materials to build a pure salvage outpost for the right people with the right heart and the right reasons. Not to go make a bunch of money to make a bunch of houses and build them real cheap after I give you the place to build them in. No. Yes, somebody's going to have to make money. you got to make money to pay for everything, but you don't have to make a killing and become a multi-mega millionaire off of building tiny houses out of pure salvage outposts for people and communities. That's not the idea. Okay. Yes, text it, text it, text it, text it, text it. Yes. So, I should probably get off. I've been on a while. It's midnight. It went really well tonight. I noticed on the real output that I may have some things that disappeared because they said they had reception problems, but I had four bars, maybe three bars. There wasn't anything going on. So, you get what you get. I gave you everything I got. And again, if you didn't do your I love you exercises today, tomorrow morning when you get up, if you haven't got that down pat, if you got down pat, you can say, I love you, 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 and truly mean it without conditions every time, 10 times in a row. When you can say that, you don't have to say it anymore. Every time you see yourself in the mirror, you'll be saying it. Hey, how you doing today, man? I love you. And that's the way you want it. Please. we got to get past that part. If you can't love you, well, even though I do, I may not want you around because you may be a miserable sucker. So, until you get to be happy, and when you want to, when you want to get empowered, let's talk wibbly and wub. Let's talk about a world union of beings. Let's talk about empowering everybody to communicate. And with communication, no censorship, we can solve all the problems of the world. If we get rid of the bad guys in the middle that want to make money off of it and control everything, that's the world union of beings taking control instead of the guys in the middle. And we might actually have a peaceful place. That's what the book is about. It's totally made up. It's totally fantasy. And of course, what are the odds? that it could ever actually happen on Earth. Yeah, who knows? Some people believe that odds are there's no God. You never know. If you want to bet odds, personally, I'm betting there is. Hope you are too. You take care.